Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here today with Brett Tolman, who is the CEO of the Travel Corporation, and also Shannon Gian, who is the Chief Treadright and Sustainability Officer. And a few weeks back, uh, they launched uh, another uh, sort of what they call a five-year strategy or a, a sustainability strategy, strategy called How We Tread Right. And it goes off of Tread Right, which has been around for a while. It's the uh, nonprofit sustainable organization that uh, the Travel Corporation runs. And we're going to talk about this new strategy and what it means. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, uh, uh, for both of you, how are you and where are you? Brett, uh, where are you? Thank you, James. Great to see you again. I'm in Los Angeles and have been for the last seven plus months. And Shannon, where are you? I'm in Toronto, uh, in in Ontario, and still, likewise, still still here. <laughs> well, I, hear, I, I hear things in Canada might be a little better than the states, but hopefully that that is that remains the case. But um, now, now let's talk about this. I, I sort of gave the intro there about this new five year sustainability strategy. Can can you both tell us a little bit more about this strategy and why you launched it now? And I'll, I'll start with you, Brett. Great, James. So, you know, we've been on this journey for some time to ensure that as a family owned and run business, now in our hundredth year, that we want to do the right thing by the communities we visit and serve, by our industry as well, by our team members, that we're a company that takes sustainability, climate change, global warming, all very seriously. And having been in this industry for decades, I'm also very cognizant as you are of the reputation or the views that some have taken for our industry, both in and more importantly, outside the industry, that we are a substantial carbon polluter or contributor to global warming, that we don't need leave enough profits in the destinations uh, that we take travelers to. And that in general, any and all owners and operators in the travel industry need to take a much more assertive stance against climate change, against our own footprints, and that we need to do more to support the communities and the destinations that we visit. And we've been working on that for some time, but we all thought with really Shannon's initiative and drive that we needed to really bring it all together and we needed to be for, far more actively involved towards becoming a carbon neutral company, number one. Number two, that the immersive experiences that we're offering across our itineraries, and we have over 1,500 itineraries that we operate at any one time across all of our 40 brands, that we're doing as much as we could to have a lighter footprint on those itineraries, and that in as many of them as possible, we were doing more to leave more money in the destination per se with the local communities. And then there's other offshoots of that better supporting the BIPOC communities out there on the back of obviously what we're dealing with appropriately and over time, long overdue um, with society in the U S and elsewhere and supporting more indigenous and black communities. So we're doing more in that regard. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Shannon because she's far more eloquent and educated than I am on these issues and, really built our five-year sustainability strategy. So I think she'll uh, answer your question much more emphatically than I can. Well, Shannon, let's turn it over to you. Uh, why, why launch this? Day? You've had tread right for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but now we have this new five-year strategy, how we tread right. Uh, talk a little bit about why we're doing, you're doing this now uh, and, and what it, what's, uh, what's going to be different uh, from what you've been doing. Sure. Um, I mean, as you said, it's uh, you know, how we tread right is the travel corporation's new five year sustainability strategy. So really, it, this strategy is uh, the coming together of a number of initiatives that we have, including tread right and all of the funds that we give to local projects uh, worldwide, our efforts to remove single use plastics, our commitment to carbon neutrality. We've been making a lot of um, steps forward and commitments and really what we needed was 
a blueprint for all of our 40 brands to be able to make good on all of our promises. Um, and of course, that's what how we try to tread right is. It's the blueprint to use the issues that we've identified as having negative impacts on the places we operate and of course are sure to negatively impact our business in turn. So those issues include climate change, sustainable food production, responsible consumption, animal welfare, to name a few. Uh, these challenges we've aligned against the United Nations global goals and then developed our own sustained strategic goals um, that are going to affect change against these challenges. Uh, you know, the Tread Right Foundation, as you said, has been around for a while, since 2008, and it's really the expression of sustainability through philanthropic efforts, whereas how we tread right is how we intend to um, make change through the way in which we operate. Mm -hmm. now, now, Brett, uh, as Cannon just mentioned, you actually invested in Tread Right back in 2008. Uh, what was your thinking back then? I mean, you were very an early adopter of these practices and one of the few privately owned companies to really put a deep emphasis on this. And now you're going another, an, another mile or two with this uh, new five-year strategy as applied to all your brands. But tell us a little bit of the background of Tread Right and what, why you thought it was so you know, vitally important. Absolutely, James. So I've been passionate since I was a young boy about our planet, sustainability, recycling. And as a family owned business, speaking with my father, our chairman back in 2007, and recognizing what we were seeing in terms of headwinds and obviously dialogue in the media and otherwise that our industry was not doing enough to give back. You know, we felt that as a family, it was important to start doing that. And we felt that it was incumbent on us to do it, not to ask uh, customers, travelers, the public to donate to charitable um, good causes, which many in the industry do. So we felt that the customers already giving us their hard earned money to take a trip with us. And therefore it was important that we took a percentage of those profits and put them towards good causes. And so with that concept, we created what was originally called the Conservation Foundation, mm -hmm. which then morphed to the Tread Pride Foundation several years ago. And the idea was we would take a percentage of our profits each year from all of our brands, put them into this nonprofit, mm -hmm. and then that nonprofit would choose projects or ways in which to spend that money effectively on behalf of our company, on behalf of our team, on behalf of our customers, not asking anyone to donate to these causes. And it certainly evolved over time. We started with some large conservation projects. We donated a lot of money to Conservation Foundation to help in the Atlantic Forest in Brazil, which was something I picked up on through WTTC in 2009 when Marriott did the same thing. And then we gave a lot of money to WWF to help build a a welcome center for an indigenous population in the Kimberleys in Australia and so forth. And then over time that morphed to doing projects that each of the brands chose. And we didn't think that was effective as uh, it should be. And that was around the time Shannon came on board and together we've pivoted to now working in a combination of <clears throat> existing charities that we believe are worthwhile to support, such as SOS India, which helps to rehabilitate in, uh, elephants that have been poorly treated and maligned in the tourism industry. And our guests can go visit and see what SOS India does with these majestic animals, to traveling to Jordan with Tourism Cares and learning about this Women's Cooperative in uh, Iraq Al Amir, just outside Jordan. Yeah, I think I was with you when we visited that. Exactly, James. I was just going to say, and you know, seeing those people and how they were struggling, that we could really help make meaningful change by bringing travelers to them to cook lunches and earn an income from that, as well as then helping build out the gift shop so anyone who goes there could buy some of the beautiful handmade. Jordanian products to take home as souvenirs. So two examples of projects, both existing organizations, and then others that we've started ourselves really with personal interests like Bushman's Clue for Relais Chateau property in the Cedarburg Mountains in South Africa as a dwindling Cape Leopard species. Very few of them left. 
they being killed by farmers who are dealing with decades of drought and trying to keep their livestock alive. And these leopards who've had their uh, environment encroached on by humanity are also dealing with the drought, have no food supply. So they're coming onto these farms and killing the livestock in order to stay alive as well. And we found out about this animal called an Anatolian sheepdog from Turkey that's a massive dog and is used to keep cheetahs away from farms. So we've adapted that to these farmers in the areas around the Cedarberg Mountains where the Cape Leopard is. And we've driven this project. I think we're up to now almost 10 farms that have one of these dogs. And we've seen a decrease in the number of leopards being killed. And we're just continuing to invest in these projects year after year. So another thing we're proud of is that we were able to fund every one of our projects in 2020 which obviously a lot of charities haven't had fundings from their annual supporters. So we're very pleased we've been able to continue that. And so proud of Shannon and what her and her small mighty team are doing to drive our Tread Right Sustainability Project. And just to be clear again, <clears throat> while the name's the same, it is separate. Tread Right Foundation is a one word foundation. Tread right in the strategy is two words, and that does mean we want to tread light and we want to tread right upon the planet, which is why, as Shannon said, it is really a TTC initiative, not part of the foundation, right. because this is how we reduce our footprint, how we give back more to local communities, and that's obviously through the brands and the travel business more than through the foundation. Well, I do want to talk about one of the goals, which is the carbon neutrality in a sec, but I would like to talk to Shannon first about uh, how your role has evolved with TreadRight uh, as you, after you joined the organization, and now you're kind of uh, also helping, uh, you know, the parent company, TTC, uh, to, to really look at itself and trying to do all the things that are going to make it tread right in the world. Sure. Uh, you know, I joined uh, a long time ago, uh, in fact, as a consultant to uh, help Brett and David Hosking um, build out TreadRight manage projects and tell the story of, of, of the projects, um, something that we've been working on for many years now. And yeah, my background is in sustainable tourism, always has been. And so, you know, we started to you know, pick up initiatives, shall we say, committed to re removing single-use plastics from our operations, um, got very involved with animal welfare. Our brands are looking to, you know, it, reduce their own footprint in the destinations in which they operate. And so it was really through a conversation with Brett uh, that, that, that we, we realized this evolution needed uh, some, I guess, m more consistent direct leadership and it was Brett's uh, idea, in fact, that the reality is this is an executive role uh, and this must have the backing, which it does uh, genuinely of all of the executives. And so that's when um, I joined and, um, and became the chief Treadwright and sustainability officer uh, in, in an effort to make sure that this was elevated. No, absolutely. And obviously, you have to have support from the top. And clearly, Brett was very supportive of all of this from the beginning. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that is one of the everybody may have sustainability in mind. But, uh, you know, I, I've seen very few companies that put it right up front, uh, like uh, the Travel Corporation. Uh, now, Brett, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, one of the goals here with how we tread right is the carbon neutrality uh, by 2030. Uh, now, some of your products really are already doing uh, just that. In fact, you have the new, uh, and forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, uh, Ixgara? Hydra. Hydra. Sorry. I, I, my, okay. Uh, 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 safari Lodge, which is, it's a Safari Lodge in Botswana. And uh, can you talk a little bit about this property, which is part of the Red Carnation Hotels, and, and uh, how it is achieving uh, carbon ne neutrality? Absolutely. It's a great question, James. And I'll just quickly. I see that. The background. There you go. Image. Now we're in Africa, right? Heathrow property. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which we're hoping to open on the 1st of December. My sister's about to fly out there as soon as we get approval from the Botswana government to help change it. So Kidra will be, we believe, one of the best, if not the finest luxury safari lodge in Africa. We're spending over 30 million US dollars on it. So no one spent the amount of money that we are. We've brought in 40 of the most influential young 
African artists from South Africa and Botswana who are creating some unique pieces from every shower, for example, will be carved out of bronze to replicate what the lily pads look like throughout the Okavango Delta. So as a guest, you will stand there and a lot of what's going to be around you will be beautiful handmade metal representing the actual environment that you're staying in. And my sister, Tony, and our local designers and architect that we've worked with have really created something magnificent. We can't wait to profile that. And with that, obviously, being a safari lodge and being in the middle of the delta where you need to have a zero footprint. So when you build anything, you're required by law to be able to remove it at any time, especially when your concession ends after 15 years and you need to return the the land to what it was before. So everything we design has to be removable and nothing's permanent, no concrete and so forth. And so that design has definitely taken that all into account as well as making sure we're almost completely off the grid. So we have a spectacular new Tesla battery uh, solar plant that will ensure that that's almost entirely carbon neutral. From that perspective, we're going to have worm farms and so forth that'll take care of our waste. And we'll be donating that, uh, mulch and manure to our local communities so that they can grow new vegetables and fruits in the local areas. We'll be bringing in local guides who our guests can go with for a day to learn how to track like a local Botswanan. Um, so you're also having local community engagement with some people and giving you great guest experiences. Uh, we'll be donating to some conservation projects in the area around probably the leopard species as well as wild dogs which is something our family is very passionate about or painted dogs as they call today so very exciting where Kidra will be positioned and uh, we're also in partnership with Great Plains Safaris which is Derek and Beverly Joubert who are two of the most renowned individuals and photographers and storytellers in Africa People might remember uh, the videos that, and films they've done in the past on elephants and so forth. J-O-U-B-E-R-T. They've done a lot of work for National Geographic as well. So wonderful people to be partnered with. Now, so now the uh, uh, obviously this is the project that's coming up, but now, now we're looking at, you know, going back and looking at all the TTC brands and trying to develop experiences that are uh, sustainable and possibly heading towards, obviously heading towards carbon nu neutral. Uh, uh, I guess I'll go back to you, Brett, first, uh, just a little bit about uh, how you're applying all this to the, the tour, river cruise, and hotel brands that you have, uh, both to develop sustainable travel experiences and also to get everybody on the, on the same page in terms of the goal of carbon neutrality by 2030. Absolutely. So, as they say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So over the last several years, this has been a, a multi-year undertaking that we're launching now. And again, hats off to Shannon for all she's done to bring this sophistication of measurement into the business. She can talk further about it. And I would like to stress that what we're doing, we are happy to share with anyone within the industry who wants to adapt our measurement tools or some of our strategies or our steps to get there. So, you know, we don't think this is a point of difference, but something any and all companies can and should be doing. We've learned from the leadership at Intrepid Travel. Daryl Wade is a good friend. I have the utmost respect for him and James Thornton. So they've shared some of how they've been on their journey to get to carbon neutrality some years ago and being a B Corp. And Shannon certainly learned from that. And we want to do the same and share this with anyone who's interested and wants to apply it. So I just wanted to put that out there. But I'll hand it over to Shannon to best explain from a, a science and a measurement standpoint how we've quantified our carbon footprint from our own business miles, flown miles to, and this is, I'm talking about 19, obviously not 2020. Right. We are a carbon neutral company almost this year. <laughs> By default, I guess, right? <laughs> exactly. But that's not where we want to start. And then what we've done with, we've invested millions in solar across a number of the, we own 35 to 40 office buildings around the world. We've installed solar in a number of them, wherever it made sense to do it. And there was the ability to substantially reduce our 
electricity and footprint on the offices. And then a number of other things, as Shannon mentioned earlier, the reduction in sustainable and single-use plastics. We've implemented food waste reduction programs in all of our hotels and in our ships. And in quantifying all of this, we know what the size of our footprint is, and we're developing different ways in order to get to a carbon neutral position, a significant amount of which will be through carbon offsets. And that's where the question is of by when will we be carbon neutral? Because that's going to come down to money, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we want to do it as soon as possible, but we need to see when full recovery happens within the industry. Because as the saying goes, you have to do well in your business in order to do good out in the world. And right. obviously, the sustainability of one's business has to be first and foremost coming out of a global pandemic. So our hope and expectation is to actually achieve carbon neutrality across our group, included for our travel, including our travelers' footprints by 26 or 27, so well before 2030. But oh, right. we never like to say something we can't deliver to. So we don't want to commit to a specific year until we've seen recovery come back to our industry and to the travel corporation. But my anticipation would be the latest 26 or 2027 will be carbon neutral by then. Well, yeah, I do want to get to, we're going to talk in a second about COVID-19 and its effect, but Shannon, uh, over to you in terms of how do you quantify uh, mm -hmm. all these things and, and, and look at what uh, the TTC brands are doing and making sure, sure that they are, uh, following sustainable practices and, and can meet the goals. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it, there's a couple ways of looking at it. So there's the carbon footprint um, of our operations. So everything we own, all of our own assets, hotel properties, business um, offices, coaches, um, it, and, and our, our fleet. And then there's the actual trips themselves. So our, our number one priority from our business perspective on that which we own is to draw down our carbon footprint primarily before we rely on offsets. And that's because that's within our control. That is your typical scope one, scope two carbon emissions. And we're doing that through a number of ways. For instance, all L London Red Carnation properties will operate on renewable energy by Q4 2022, 100% renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So they're going to carry a lot of the burden on this one. Thanks, Red Carnation. Uh, we're working towards biodiesel in AA to King's vehicles. Uh, research is ongoing on Uniworld for alternative lower emission fuel sources. That's a longer term uh, need because, of course, that requires considerable thought, time, investment, and COVID recovery would have to happen before that. Um, and uh, also, we're looking, you know, we'll, we'll, we will prioritize low to no emission vehicles when we take a look at our next fleet replacement program. So, yeah, because obviously all of the tour brands of uh, TTC use use motor coaches and uh, use motor coaches far more efficient than car travel. Uh, that the average the average bear not, but might not recognize that just simply because of in, in Europe largely EU regulations are quite strict. So they're they're actually quite efficient vehicles, uh, and all of our vehicles are um, Euro six engines, which is. Uh, the highest that they can be at the moment. Um, so, the, you know, that's the way, and as Brett said, we've invested heavily in solar um, and um, food waste reduction. So there's a lot of things that a business can do that, that are actually within our reach, shall we say. So that's what we're doing on, an, on, on our operations side of things. Mm -hmm. um, just a few of the things. With respect to our trips, we have developed a proprietary tool, absolutely with the help of Intrepid, as, Brett, as been Brett mentioned, which has been really useful. And that tool has allowed us to measure the carbon footprint of every trip per brand, per packs. Mm -hmm. So we understand the cost to offset every trip. And the reason that we are choosing to go down the carbon offset trip on our, or the, the carbon offset route with, route with respect to our trips, forgive me, is that it, it's just the disparate nature of our supply chain and the fact that we have only so much influence over our suppliers. And so in an effort to, as an interim solution, shall we say, we will be going the carbon neutral, uh, tri the, the, car the carbon neutral trip through carbon offsets. But again, it's an interim solution as we progress and these goals are reviewed annually and updated annually. Um, and I, I definitely think that we can reach carbon neutrality by 26, 25. I'll set it for 25, Brett, for when you change your mind. Because I know at some point we'll say, let's just do it. One must be prepared for that. 
No, absolutely. Well, it's, it's great to have that goal. And even earlier than I, I was saying is 2030, you want to get it done by 2025, 2027. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about first, Brett, about uh, the effect of COVID-19 on your strategy with TreadWrite and obviously this uh, new uh, How We Tread Right. Uh, it, it, I mean, so many people think, well, you know, we're dealing with this COVID-19 crisis. We can't really focus on sustainability. But I, I don't know if it's an either-or proposition or not. Uh, how, how can we get the focus back on sustainability, uh, uh, you know, uh, and make it as important or more important? I think continue to have conversations like this are one way, James, and I certainly thank you and salute you and insider for continuing to have some conversations like this and focusing on it. You know, I think we all need to remember as a number of leaders in the past have said from President Obama to others and Shannon as well, um, you know, it's all about incremental gain. And you hear all the time people saying, do not put this off for tomorrow. You can make a difference today. And that's true of any human being, not just a company in travel and tourism. You know, we can make the decision to refuse as well as reduce, reuse and recycle. That's a fourth R that I learned about when I was in New Zealand in February, just saying no to plastics or whatever it might be, you know, and there's so many things we can do around the house to reduce our footprints. And if we're a caring individual and you appreciate and agree with the scientists that global uh, warming and climate change is a reality and that's why we're having our worst hurricane season in history. Forest fires from Australia to California and Oregon and Washington and all that. You know, if you believe that that is true, then we can all make a difference and I encourage everyone to do that. If you don't, then that's a different conversation and frankly, I'm not going to go down that road because I'm not a climate denier, obviously. Right. And, uh, neither are you. So, you know, that's why we're prepared to share any of our information and learnings with anyone else. And we're all in this together. You know, if the world believes that travel and tourism is bad for the planet, as one had before COVID and overcrowding and all that, then it's bad for everyone. If people are going to travel less because of, you know, planes are the most polluting cause of climate change in the world. When I was in Canada late last year, I had some interviews and people were saying, well, you know, plane travel causes more air turbulence. And we've got customers who are saying they're never going to fly again because they've, uh, you know, reached the age of 70 and they've done enough travel. And you know, we don't want to hear that from anyone. And so we all need to be more responsible. We all need to be more accountable in our actions. And there's no time like the present. So, as I said earlier, we've been working on this strategy for some time. It didn't start after the middle of March. And we thought there was no time like the present to launch it. So with TTC, we've you know certainly laid off as few people as we could. We've still got 460 employees on the payroll in the US, for example. And so having some of these resources and talents still on board while other companies laid off people, we've been able to, you know, implement this strategy and roll it out and share it with our partners and the media as an example of that, as well as continuing to fund our projects. And we've got a very strong balance sheet, so we were able to do it. So I don't want to sit here and say, you know, shame on any other company for not doing it. And you read in the media all the time about how many charities have obviously gone under or right. have lost so much of their support because of this economic fallout, you know, WTTC, $5.5 trillion lost in the global economy with the lockdown and 197 million jobs lost in travel and tourism. So we all need to get back out there. And I would share, you know, that if your viewers haven't seen it, Shannon and the TreadRite team have done an incredible job putting some videos out during this time as well, because we think storytelling is very important. So we've had Serene Fox, our people ambassador, talking about the impact of travel and tourism on cultural communities. And uh, we've supported a number of cultural communities, indigenous communities in Canada, Australia for a long time. I thought that was a beautiful story and insight for people. We have Amy Vitale, our wildlife ambassador, doing another one on the impact on wildlife without travel and tourism this year. And then uh, Celine Cousteau, our regional ambassador, talking about the planet and the impact on 
organic farms like this olive oil farm she uh, visits that one of our luxury gold itinerary goes to. And then three, um, the three ambassadors came together and did a beautiful three minute video on launching how we tread right. So um, if you don't have those, James, we'll make sure through Shannon that we get you all four of those videos because they are beautiful. They're very emotive and evocative and inspiring. And I think they all reiterate how much the world is missing travelers today because all of these fragile communities, our indigenous communities in Australia and Canada, the wildlife in Africa and all the communities that we serve there and Jordan and everywhere around the world are all suffering because there's no tourists out there and they've all lost their incomes and their families are starving and can't be educated, etc. So I think we all need to remember that and help get tourism back on the road as soon as we can. Well, we've been trying to share the videos that you produce so that when we see them, when we come out, I've tried to do every one of them. Uh, hopefully I'm up to date, but we'll have to check and see whether I, I'm missing a few that we've, we've been sharing with our travel advisor viewers. Uh, Shannon, and, and how did you select these ambassadors uh, to go out and talk about these different things? And, and uh, what's been the feedback uh, of how effective uh, the, this, these campaigns have been? Um, so the, the, to answer your first question, we, we choose ambassadors that we feel will represent the pillars of people, planet, and wildlife that have credentials in their own right, and uh, frankly, who will challenge us because that's the best way for improvement is to, is to you can't always surround yourself by people who are going to agree with you. Um, you know, and our ambassadors have been brilliant at helping us tease out the stories of the value that travel brings to communities um, wildlife um, and the environment worldwide, they have their own audiences and a critical part of what we're trying to do is share that message. As, as Brett said, you know, it's, it's overwhelming. The media, the news right now, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, sad to be, to be honest. Um, but when you can share the message that we all have an opportunity to make changes and it's how we run our household, it's who we decide to travel with, it's, you know, that's, that's the value that the ambassadors have brought to us. And I, I would argue rigor uh, because, again, as I said earlier, they're in their own right really, really impressive women. That's Amy Vitale, Celine Cousteau and um, Serene Fox. Well, uh, we're almost running out of time here for this interview. It's been a fascinating discussion. Uh, I just have your closing thoughts very quickly uh, about uh, how we tread right and tread right and, and how we proceed in the future. Brett, I'll start with you. One day at a time, incremental gain and cumulative effect. So the more we all do, the more we can affect climate change and global warming. If you haven't read the book, Drawdown by Paul Hawken, which Shannon mentioned a little earlier, the drawdown effect. Highly recommend you read it. He identifies so many realistic, achievable ways to address climate change. And again, as informed citizens of the world, we can all be better citizens in helping protect our planet because there's only one of them. I don't think any of us, certainly in our lifetime, are going to get to Mars or anywhere else. And we should all be focusing all of our efforts and resources on protecting our planet helping recover those fragile communities that are out there that do benefit from tourism. And I thank all of your listeners and the travel advisors who are on this because you're all a part of it and you're a part of our great industry. And we look forward to supporting you and your recovery in the future as and when we come out of this. Stay resilient, stay safe, stay strong. And know TTC and its brands are there to support you in the months and years to come. <laughs>